Re Address by one of the most wonderful creative orators. Join me in welcoming Mr. Amir Jalil, Group Chief Creative Officer and Chairman of the Malan Law uh, Lintas Group, who's joining us. Amir has uh, been part of the uh, part of building brands like Micromax, OLX, Havels, and has conceived and led the journey of Tata Tea's Jage, uh, Jago Ray moment. He's, uh, his portfolio over the years has been including the iconic work on Google, Maruti Suzuki, ICICI Prudential, and Bajaj. Well, in 2015, he founded a new agency, Malalin Task, from scratch, and today it has grown up to be amongst the top 10 agencies out here. Amir has uh, continued steering and transforming Malin uh, Task Group's India's most storied brand portfolio. So with this, it is now time to have him on your stage and screen. Thank you so much, Amir, for joining us today. You've been very kind uh, in uh, waiting and uh, listening to all our panelists as well. Thank you for that. Apologies on the slight delay on our end. Over no, to you. no worries. No worries. It was, uh, you know, I'm happy I was part of that session. I got to listen to some real gems from there. And uh, yeah, uh, no worries at all for, for <laughs> any delay at all. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. So this, Samir, over to you. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, I, I'll just start. Uh, um, hi, everybody. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, E4M, for having me. It's an honor. But more than that, thank you uh, for allowing, uh, you know, an indirectly connected to health individual, uh, such as me, to air my opinion. Uh, in many ways, uh, you know, the health industry stood up during an absolutely trying time and made the rest of us very, very proud, uh, very grateful. They, this industry has always been a beacon. Uh, throughout history, this industry has looked ahead and not at its own toes. Uh, you've been forward thinkers, full of foresight, preparedness, and one can only marvel that if this industry had not been so agile and ready, what the state of the world would be today. So, so happy, so happy to be here. And, you know, how profound... Uh, and meaningful that phrase uh, suddenly has become being here. Uh, an automatic prayer uh, springs in the head, just uh, you know, gratitude for being, uh, being here. Uh, so while the theme of this conference uh, is marketing communications and brand empathy in the time of a pandemic, I would like to waver a bit to a slightly more uh, encompassing conversation. Uh, please indulge me. Uh, I'm sharing some thoughts. Uh, sharing thoughts, not data. Uh, you know, uh, data today seems to have acquired a mind of its own. Uh, data doesn't need interpretation anymore. Data talks directly to us. And, you know, we hear people say that, uh, but the data tells us this, data is saying this, Will you argue with data? This data is a pet peeve, peeve of mine, sorry. Uh, but it's for another day. Uh, therefore, thoughts. Um, if you look at the word health, and if you look at the word self, they are contradictory. Uh, you know, one comes from the original uh, high less, uh, which is... Uh, which is the original word from where it descends, and which means wholeness, actually, or completeness. And uh, the other, which is self, uh, comes from, well, you know, individualness or singleness as such. So if you look at the, if you look at my health, if you say my health as a concept, it's a misnomer. You know, it cannot exist. If I say I'm healthy, I'm incorrectly assuming something that cannot exist. Let me try this, uh, you know, try saying this in another way. So when someone says, how's your head or how's your tummy? Uh, they are being concerned, yes. But it doesn't help for only your head or your tummy to be well. And likewise, if someone asks, how are you? It feels nice. But, you know, I'm okay. 
but I really don't know about a certain bat living in a forest thousands of miles away from me. Health needs, uh, you know, whole thinking, uh, not self-thinking. Uh, in fact, if one extends the limited concept of body health to that of health for the earth, say, then self-thinking or self-preservation in many ways may actually be more harmful to whole health, I feel. If I'm selfishly consuming organic avocado and it's coming from a farm that was until recently a forest, then that's not health. It's health. It's H-E-L-L-T-H. -L -L it's not health because it's not whole. Uh, look, we are health conscious and we are environmentally conscious, but those two are, you know, two separate concepts in our head. They are not one somehow yet. We look after our body and its health in some ways when we are not deep frying it away at least. And similarly, some of us at any rate do a bit for the well-being of the planet. So I was saying that, uh, you know, we could fuse the two and somehow evolve to planet health uh, as an idea. And uh, if and when we truly start believing that, then every time someone asks you, how are you, you'll not be able to say, I'm well, thank you, because well, you know the state of the earth. I'm a communicator. I'm not a doctor, not a medical expert, but I do know about uh, mental viruses. This virus is a thought. If it goes and sits in your head, it will program your thinking, your behavior. If you start to really believe my health is nothing without planet health, that will change your actions to those that are not selfish, but foolish. And that will be immensely valuable to all of us. Many of us here, while realizing the immense human toll and economic tragedy, are also benefiting from the opportunity of the pandemic. Data is selling like crazy. Home entertainment is selling like crazy. FMCG is going bonkers. Ecom, or most of it, is upticking wildly. Insurance is having its moment. We know this, and we are making the most of this opportunity, right? Uh, we are opportunists. And so I asked you to see uh, the biggest opportunity in the pandemic, something that will benefit the whole. This opportunity is about meeting the prepared mind. People have seen the impact of their life on their life from a random event. They have understood the connection between disconnected events and its far reaching impact on us. This is a media opportunity, the biggest available window for everyone to wake up to realize and internalize the fact that health is not a vacation we take once in a year. Health is not a subject. It's a necessary condition. Health is not an island. You cannot be healthy if your fellow woman is not. If anything, the pandemic has shown us this. Health is not your jagu, jagir alone. It's an overall state of the earth. If your lungs need curing, you have to start with the bat. The pandemic has given us an opportunity to communicate the message of whole health. In a way, it's laid the ground for people to believe that some unconnected Dur Darazka event can reach you, shut your business, ruin your bar going days, kill your loved one. So it's a prepared mind. It has the ability to take in messages. We can battle the worst disasters that are flung at us. We can have science, technology, advancements, control over the elements. Everything is effective and everything must be employed. Nothing, however, is as effective as an evolved, enlightened and aware individual. The loha of the mind, as it were, is garam, and we need to maro the hatora. It's not going to be easy equating the self with the whole. For one, self-health comes instinctively to us. Swatting a mosquito is an unconscious act. 
not drinking from a plastic bottle doesn't come as easily to our heads. It doesn't somehow compute as good for our health. Good for the future, yes. Good for our children, yes. Not so much health, but it needs to. For another, the two ecos, economics and ecology, are at cross purposes and how. Who can stop themselves from buying crypto, not profiteering from the boom of the crypto, just because its mining is eating up the energy resources and causing huge pollution for the sake of the environment? Or far less for an utterly vague concept as the planet's health is my health, or it needs to. Some acts are completely synced, though. People who have adopted life cycle lifestyle cycling for it one. Clearly their health and the planet's health is inextricably linked here. Our every act needs to be like this. Once the concept of outside health and inside health becomes one and the same for everyone, that's when the world will get the most empowered to heal and become stronger. I'm reminded of some extremely illuminating words here हर जर्रा चमकता है अनवारे इलाही से हर सांस ये कहती है हम हैं तो खुदा भी है जर्रा इज स्पेक अनवारे इलाही इज ग्लो ऑफ एक्सिस्टेंस आई एम यूजिंग अ डिराइव मीनिंग नॉन रिलीजियस एंड कन्वीनियंट विद अपॉलॉजीज टू द शायर अकबर इलाहाबादी व्हाट इट सेज इज एवरी स्पार्क एवरी स्पेक sparkles with the glow of existence and every living act of ours says i am here as part of this existence to end uh, i want to say that you know i have you know got away gotten away with some really silly and naive ideas in my career so i'm going to go ahead and share one with you so if we accept this Uh, idea of our health is our wholeness maybe we can adopt a new word to remind us that our health is nothing but planet health and so i propose a silent p before the word health in usage we say health but we could write p h e a l t h uh is this is this reading right for you guys i hope yeah or basically yeah it's it's come out the other side like oh i have the other one i was i was i'm prepared yes perfect yeah because yeah. to me it was looking like a mirror image so that's why absolutely so uh, thank you everybody wishing you good uh, health always perfect thank you so much what an incredible address that was uh, thank you once again uh, mr jaleen for joining us today Thank you. Thank you everybody.